we going? Oh, oh it's, it's cold. cold. It's oh, cold. it's cold. It's cold. It's cold. So we're hot uh, though. Happy face. Happy face. <laughs> Hello, Hello, everyone. <laughs> Oh my goodness, welcome to Mocha in the Morning. Mm. I am your host, Miss Keisha Boyd, and this is my co-host, officially Jorge. We are so happy to be here with you this first Friday in May. Can you believe it's yes. May? Oh my gosh. It's gonna be May. Yes, hey, hey, <laughs> it's gonna be May. And we're in the hall of the portico. May. So if you hear um, a heavenly echo, uh -huh. it's because we're in the great sanctuary meditational hall. Yes. Of the doing Cafe. great things. You should come down and visit. Yeah, I have a great <laughs> and busy weekend coming up. We are going to be doing our Derby Delight on oh, Sunday. Oh, I know. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you. I am. So I, I, I ordered three hats, mm -hmm. fascinators, because I can't choose which one I want. Mm. I have to shout out um, Garrison's, I took it to um, a tailor in Lakeland. And when I tell you, when I walked in there and he altered my dress right then on the spot. Really? I was like, here's double your, your fee. Hey, yeah. Because customer service, you Hello. can't pay for good customer. I mean, right. you can, but I appreciate it. He had so, you woo -woo. stitched and snatched. Yes. yes. <laughs> we have so much to talk about. In a matter of <laughs> we have so much to talk about, but. First, coffee. Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. to your morning blend. Once again, I'm your host, Miss Keish Boyd, and this is officially Jorge, and it's time for our steamer. What you got we for got us? We got the steamer. Yes, we do. All right, cool. Fun stuff. Yes. So, we have Obamas. Listen. Okay, we talked about them before. Yes. About this whole Netflix deal. Yep. But now, we got some real tea yes. on that deal. Yes, yes, and yes. And it's called a slate. Listen. And because I didn't know what that was, <laughs> and I know you don't know what that is, he's just gonna tell us what that is. So their content slate, what they're slated to release on Netflix. First of all, the moms mm -hmm. are doing their thing, okay? Yes. They are getting paid, Cha -ching. okay, and doing what they need to do to secure, to continue to secure their future. But they have a wonderful slate of content coming out for Netflix. So one is uh, history. Uh, a lot of it's actually history. Some things. Uh, based on fashion in World War II um, era. They have something that will come out with Frederick Douglass. Um, they have a preschool show called Listen to Your Vegetables, Eat Your Parents, which I Ooh. think is it's just Ooh. correct. I, I love know. it. I, I know love because, it. Look, I know what my mom eats. And <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to eat <laughs> they, um, So yeah, they have some really, really cool content um, getting ready to come out for mm. us on Netflix. And speaking of Netflix, Miss mm. Regina King. Yes, the queen herself. The queen herself. I love Regina King. Yeah, she's awesome. She is, or just inked a first look deal with Netflix, okay? And her sister, Rihanna uh, King, will be um, over the content programming. Yes, and you know she I'm is inking all the of, deal right Inking now. the deal, honey. We're coming to come talk yes. to you. Royal. All these kings being yes. queens. Listen, and of course she'll join the ranks with, um, Chanda Rhymes right. and um, Ava DuVernay and mm -hmm. all, a few other people that are doing great things over it. Look, at I've always said, if you don't see what you like Create on it. that screen, mm -hmm. make it. That's right. Create it. Create it. Create it. Do that's it. Right. That's right. Right? Because that's what we're doing. Absolutely. Mocha in the morning. Hey, right original King. Original. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of kings. kings, yes. Listen. So LeBron James, yes, okay, is 
leading the charge. Leading the charge. To have Crayola, cro, uh, cro, Crayola excuse me. Yes. To change the color of their beautiful crayon. To Nipsey Hussle Blue. Nipsey Hussle Blue. So he wants them to change the color of the crayon to Nipsey Hussle Blue. That's awesome. That is awesome. I mean, because I, I love me a box of Crayola. Hello. <laughs> You're so silly. And what's really cool, though, is that I think this could also like spark the beginning mm -hmm. of maybe several other like name changes. Yeah. Because you know everyone grows up in different generations, Absolutely. so it would be really nice right? to have a box of Crayolas that you can identify Correct. with, kind of thing. So I think that's really cool. I think it is very very cool. And then you tell us about your Game of Thrones, young lady, Miss Nathalie. Okay, so mm -hmm. Miss Game of Thrones, which yes. um, you still not. You know, I've been considering going to watch it. <sighs> look, after look, I, the last episode I had to watch like three times just so I could like. See, I don't have that kind of brain time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you okay, because thanks. okay, but well, anyway. All I know is Ari, Araya. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so Miss Natalie Emmanuel has declined a role to play Princess Tiana. Tiana. Mm -hmm. Now this is the thing, she's declining the role because she's saying that. Um, that there should be another actor mm -hmm. uh, with darker features to play the role of Princess Tiana. Yep, this is not our first time hearing this, right? Because yeah. Amanda Steinberg said the same thing for a role that she was, you know, going out for. Oh, for Black Panther. Yeah. Remember, she mm -hmm. said she wasn't dark enough. Well, this is the thing. Like, I absolutely admire her for that. I think it's awesome. But at the same time, girl, you know this business. Listen, you better. Girl, get first you. of all, you're black. Yes. We got you, right? right? Don't decline too many jobs. Because you don't think you melanated enough. Okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we, I, I mean, I totally get it. But at the same time, don't decline too many jobs. Listen. You know, because, you know, you, so, you run a mocha in the morning. Yes. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. With that, we'll be right back with our piping hot <laughs> segment on mocha in the morning. <laughs> it's true, though, girl. For real. Like, don't be turning <laughs> this will be the last job you got. Shoot. Okay. Right. Black in the Bay and Next Level Entertainment present the fifth annual Derby Delight, an evening of style, grace, and class featuring live music from Marlon Boone and the City Group Trio, a fashion show starring you, our guest, a cigar lounge, Derby Bites, and more. So join us at the beautiful Jackson's Waterfront Room in downtown Tampa on Sunday, May 5th from 5 to 8 p.m. Get your tickets now at www.blackinthebay.com. To mocha in the morning where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend we are back with our piping hot segment for this friday and we have lots to talk about chart topping lot yes but first before we get into that we want to send our prayers and condolences to the family of john singleton who passed away at the age of 51 he is an iconic Content producer oh, yes. and filmmaker. Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood. Poetic Boy, justice. justice. Oh my gosh. Like, you just go on and on and on with all the great things that he's been a part of. Snowfall. That yes. Night. My husband loves that show. And he's like, where is Snowfall? When is it coming back? And I'm like, look, I just watched it a couple times with you. I have no idea when this show's coming back. A true know. pioneer. He is. Oh my, bulldozer in the industry. That's right. That's I mean, right. wow. I mean, just, I mean, that incredible filmmaking. And Absolutely. stories. True stories you relatable know. Exactly. I mean, it was a great and, and and it's just you know we always talk about this and um, different health issues especially that affect our african-american community men men don't like to go to the doctor I can count how many times you know I'm usually the one making my husband's doctor's appointments just because mm -hmm. you know they're going they're going 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 I'm sure you know Kia or some of the other you know folks can attest to this but make sure that we're going to the doctor checking your blood pressure making sure everything is okay um, but we are sending our, 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 our condolences and prayers. I mean, be more like me. I mean, I go to the doctor and see the doctor every day. But that's because his husband is a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, oh, let's introduce our contributor. Yes. Too. Sorry. This week, we have our own girl from Long Beach Bikini <laughs> Contest winner. <laughs> She looks like a, she looks like relaxation. Our girl, our girl, Kia Shakur. Yes. Hey girl. 
Oh my gosh, what up guys? You look so relaxed. You look like, we look like I, I need to join you on like the beach side or the pool side or you something. You look like last night you oh, dreamt of St. Pedro. You. Oh gosh. <laughs> thank you. All right. Couple more months Jen, more time for this. Jen Dobson is also with us, the, the, the professor. Yes. The professional. And also um, creator of Germ, which I just found out. So hey girl. Ooh. Yes. How Hi. are you? I am fabulous. I am currently in Colorado enjoying myself. You had a birthday. I did. I just turned 42. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let's jump into this week's hot topics, um, or piping hot topics, rather. Talking about billboards. Yes, what about them? <laughs> First of all, let me tell y'all, this one, this one, Went to Billboard this week, okay? <laughs> like, he's still catching up I'm on rest, okay? Catching up. So yeah. tell us about your experience. It was exciting. Well, you know me, I'm always kind of lurking around and stuff like and that. And he was doing bananas. Yeah, I was. <laughs> he did. had on banana shorts. I did, I did post some Facebook Live videos. Mm -hmm. um, but let me tell you, what I always tell people, when you go to these award shows, like what you see at home is not like what you see at the awards ceremony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, it was also Fight Week in Vegas. Oh my God. The Billboard Awards. I mean, and Ariana Grande had a concert. I mean, it was just celebrities and stars everywhere. Wow. But the show was, I offered something for everybody. Yeah. Um, we saw Madonna's performance yeah. with like 15 other Madonnas on the stage. Wow. Apparently she spent like $5 million on this production of her new single. And I didn't get to see it because, I mean, we got to see her and everybody else, but what you saw at home, we didn't get to see there. So when I when I came back to my room and watched it like on YouTube, I was like, whoa, that was amazing. Not only that, Miss Mariah Carey yes. received the Icon Award and she did like a medley of some of her greatest hits. And she had a really heart you know, um, felt speech. Mm -hmm. And she did make a comment. She said um, that, you know, it's basically been a struggle for her as an interracial kid. And I think that's probably one of the first times I've never heard of her. Uh, she's kind of openly, like, in that, you know, with that large of an audience, yeah. actually came out and said that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So that's really Paula Abdul. You know, of course, all the BTS fans, the army, they were all there. Yeah. Everyone yeah. was screaming. So it was really awesome. Kelly Clarkson, she can sing. Oh, yes, right, she Kelly. can. I like her. So much fun as a host. Kia, what I want to bring you on to talk about, which I know you ready, girl. <laughs> Tell me about this Taylor Swift performance. Okay. Taylor Swift apparently on stage and reenacted one of her videos. I forgot what the song is. I'm so sorry. But the song does include, the video includes a marching band. She had a full production. She had a majorette's outfit, the whole thing. And a lot of people are comparing it to Bachella, saying that it's the mayo version <laughs> of Bachella, which, so, which is very rude. But the girl really is reenacting her video. It's not like she really was copying it, but it just was horrible timing on her part. Sorry, girl, Taylor. it was horrible. I mean, the, the headlines are like, what in the gentrification is this going on? It, it really it, it really duplicated her video. She just is really crappy timing on her part. Like, if this would have happened two years ago or, or uh, late on, it wouldn't have mattered. But uh, sorry, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. It was Mayo. Jen, are, are, it was Taylor Look, I like Taylor Swift. I, to be very honest with you, I like her music. I I am feeling her. So when I saw that, I was like, ooh, she's usually smarter than that. I don't know. What, yeah. But it, it was like, like Kia said, it was really bad timing. She should not have done it. She should have just ran with something else and came out with it in like a year. So it does look like she's copying Beyonce. So I don't believe that that's really what she's doing. But it was a big mistake, and she'll have to suffer the consequences. But, you know, Taylor's used to getting, you know, kicked back for all kinds of crazy stuff she does. So she'll be fine. Um, I didn't really, you know, even though I was there at the award show, um, I didn't really get to see the opening number. I was getting popcorn. Really? So um, they're like, oh, Taylor Swift is performing. And I was like, I'll be right back. I'm going to get some popcorn. I was thirsty, too. I wanted to get some, some uh, Coca-Cola. It was really oh good. Goodness. So when I came back, it was like, it was over. So I was able to sit down comfortably. Yes. Yeah. So, listen, 
there's so much to talk about billboards, but you know, we don't have a whole show yeah, dedicated to that. Yeah, I'll post it everywhere anyway. Exactly. So let's talk about P. Diddy and his cover on, on Essence. So Puffy, P. Is Diddy. a mama now. Sean Combs, he is unfortunately, has to play the role of both mother and father, obviously, because of the loss of Kim Porter. And I mean, I get it. it it's a great story. I don't know if I would have put him on the cover for Mother's Day because he's not a mom. I don't care what right. the situation is. He's not a mother. Right. Because um, you need certain things. I mean, yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, it, it was it, it was it was different. He talked about what she said to him before she passed, which right. was take care of my babies. Mm. And, I, you know, my grandmother, they used to always tell me people know sometimes when when their time is about to come, they can some people are spiritually connected where they can feel that. So for her to say that to him, you know, was was really something different. So, you know, I don't know. Jen, what do you feel about him being on the cover um, for Mother's Day? So, I mean, honestly, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, part of me thinks it's a really nice way to break a little bit of tradition and start to recognize fathers who are stepping in when they need to, to be really good people. But then I also have to agree with you and say he's still not a mother. Um, he can be a very good father and a very good role model, but he's not a mother. So does he really deserve to be on the cover? So I, I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn on both. What about you, Kia? Oh, let's do this. All right. So <laughs> why not just have... Here's the thing, though. Why not have a cover of Porter on the cover for Mother Day? Right. He was a good mom. And everyone said that. Let's be clear. Diddy even admitted in previous articles that before she passed away, he wasn't really a hands-on dad. He loved his kids and did the best he could, but he wasn't a hands-on dad. So he's got into the situation to have to be a full-time. So now he deserves to be on the cover for Mother's Day. Right. Like, I don't, I, I don't agree with it. It would have been a beautiful cover if it was Kim Porter with her kids, black and white photo on the cover. That would have been gorgeous. Yes. Well, I we, agree. We, we need some phone me. calls. Yeah. Or, or write some letters. Something. <laughs> Listen, but I totally agree. Totally and to all agree. the mothers, happy Mother's Day. Yes. You yes. deserve to be on, on every cover. Every cover, every day, regardless <laughs> of the day. All right, let's talk about the Carters. The Carters. Okay. They just cannot stay out of the money making news business. <laughs> Listen, I ain't mad at them. So Jay Z had a concert at the Something in the Water. Yes. I think um, festival. Which looked live. I need to. We need to check that out. Like it looks ooh, like it was live. Man, when he went, ooh, the whole crowd. Besides, besides concert. Oh, I was like, ooh, that was real deep. Yeah, and his his so tribute. Emotional. So he brought out Cameron. He brought out, um, oh my gosh, so many different artists. Nas. Um, who else did he bring out? But either way, and he did a tribute to Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle. Yeah, it was amazing. It was really, really Come cool. Gentrify your own neighborhood. Just gentrify your hood. Now, some people... Pull somebody up. Yeah, some people had, you know, they had their things to say about gentrifying the hood. But at the end of the day, that's what we're going to have to do if we want to keep our neighborhoods. Yeah. You know well, what I'm saying? And I think it's, instead of, like, making, you know, this is when you can take that word and make it something... Uh, that works for right. you in your community. Yep. As long as you have a say so, you're participating, you're leading the way, yeah. then you can say and control the way that you progress. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And that way, and I think part of it is because a lot of times, you know, in the people who live in the brown and black spaces, mm -hmm. a lot of times they don't get to have any input on what happens in their neighborhoods. Correct. Because they don't have any ownership in it. Kia? Um, so the, the concert was held at Webster Hall, and Webster Hall has been closed since 2017 for renovation. So this was like the first big concert, so that's such a big deal. And they were calling it, nicknaming it the B-side. Um, his comments are a big deal because it's partially a lot of people feel like that the whole um, Barclay came to Brooklyn and caused gentrification. A lot of people were forced to move out of their apartments. You know, the landlords made a bunch of money, but then they, the tenants were forced to move out. Um, so they could build the Barclays Center. A lot of people feel like, well, Jay-Z, you're talking about gentrifying our hood, but you took things away from us, wow. even though he's only a very small percentage owner of that community. And the funny thing about gentrification in New York is that it's not that white people are coming back into the community. It's the fact that white folks face owned it and now want them themselves. They've owned a lot of this property since the 1900s. Right. And then they bought apartment complexes in Connecticut. So now all they're doing is saying, okay, well, I don't just want to be an owner. I want to move back in here. They're not kicking black people out. They're just taking for property they already own. So that's really kind of how it's working out in New York with gentrification. That's just my 
info to give there. Hey, Jen, you don't think that maybe we can all live together like a colorful box of Crayolas? <laughs> uh, no, uh, look. <laughs> no. She wants to say no so bad. She wants to be like, no, I'm cool. I don't want to live with y'all. No. no. No, I'm good. I mean, but, but as far as, you know, what Jay-Z had to say and as far as the whole gentrification issue, and I think we even touched on it before, you know, I mean, he's right in the sense that we have to take some ownership, you know, in, in our communities, you know, and Kia's is right. You know, the, the white people have owned this land for a long time back when, you know, black were slaves and could not own land. But, but at some it. point, right. there but they has also owned been... it like since they stole it from, um, the from, from the right. Of the right. Ex exactly. So, but at some point over the course of the last 30, 40 years, at least, we should have as black people starting to purchase, even if it's very small little pieces of land for ourselves, properties, if it's a one bedroom shack, we have to start owning instead of continuing to rent and allowing landlords to continue to build wealth that way. We have to take ownership of that. So we can be mad at Jay-Z all day, for you know, what has happened in these communities. But guess what? Jay-Z is buying land. Of course, he has the money to I'm do like, so. Hey, he can buy the whole land. I yeah, mean, right. he, he got the money. He can. Yeah. He can. But even people that are only making $40,000 a year can buy a little piece of something. Look, my you know, especially here in Florida. You know, you can buy a hundred thousand dollar property making thirty five to forty thousand dollars a year and still qualify. But what's happening is most black people that I have met don't believe they can. So they're just renting instead of buying and they're paying more in rent than they are in um in you know the, the mortgage. Back exactly their mortgage, exactly. So we gotta do better. All right, that, that's a whole nother show. We might have to do a, a, yeah, a, a, a real estate show. No, we not, seriously, yeah. we might have to do a, a, a bold roast or a yeah. special blend or whatever yeah. we call it to, to talk about a signature that, blend. A signature blend. There, there we go. Is. Bam. That's, that means we haven't done one in a long time. I never, <laughs> <laughs> we now, did it. Now we got to do it. <laughs> Great. Thanks. All right, let's roll into this political conversation with our girl Kamala Harris. Yes. Okay, like, oh, she did some clapping back. Yeah, but first of all, like, I would love to like just not show up for work, especially like, you know, when you work for the government. Listen. Like, how do you just like, when Congress says mm -hmm. you need to uh, show up at this time, don't be late, and then you just don't show up because you got red and got busted and caught. Hello. Have y'all seen the video? Keith, look, have y'all seen that cross-examination? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that Kamala Harris. Take a look at this real quick. Conflict. What's my conflict of interest? I think the American public has seen quite well that you are biased in this situation and you've not been objective. And that would arguably be the conflict of well, interest. Well, you know, I have. Listen. <laughs> Clapping back. She won't answer. She's going to call, call them in all kind of lies. Kia, girl. Here's the problem with this entire situation. Barr is lying for the president. He's not protecting he's not protecting the White House. He's only protecting the president, and that's a problem. And Kamala was just trying to I just I just want you to give an answer. You're sitting here repeating questions to stop for time and also the kind of crazy mess. We just want you to answer honestly and, and get out of our faces with this. And it just, it's making the situation worse. And she was clapping back. It was really funny sitting by her side or sidekick that was funny. Right. That was funny. Right. like i got right. your back sis. right back yes. what girl i'm here for it yes girl <laughs> he was like come on queen <laughs> yeah it's just craziness going on in the white house and, and key is absolutely right he is definitely there to protect donnie boy and all his craziness that he's mm. he has going on wow all right. And now he's actually on Twitter calling Kamala a nasty woman. And we all, wait, we all know that when it comes to a strong woman, especially a strong black woman, he can't handle it. He can say he loves minorities all he wants to, but every time he gets a strong black woman in his face who has an opinion, it becomes she's a nasty woman. She's crazy. She's this, she's that. And it's, it's, it's pathetic. I can't wait till 2020. Oh mm. my God, I can't wait. And then maybe our country will have clear vision. Clear. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh. Listen. Let's talk about Miss Kaylee, Miss Teen USA. Hey, who girl. came through? Look, came through dripping in her natural curls. Can't do dripping. Yes. Can't do dripping. Yes. 
She is amazingly gorgeous. And she, oh my God, I've watched so many videos of her. And she is just gorgeous. And I'm so happy that she was confident enough yeah. to know that she could rock her natural curls and still Ooh, she was win the crown. Oh, yeah. she was. Listen. Hello. Loved it. Jen, did you see her? I did, and she looked absolutely beautiful. Um, I think it was one of those things that really like brought support to Black women and giving us permission to just be our natural, wonderful, kinky-haired selves. So I was super impressed with it. It was great. Yes, absolutely. I was like, and O'Shea, I agree. O'Shea. O'Shea. <laughs> you better do and, it. I, and I agree with her. Because of the type of hair texture that she has, she could have easily straightened it right. and had it like bone straight or with waves in it. But the fact that she was just like, no, nah, forget this. I'm just going to keep it in this curly little, in my little coiffy fro. It was perfect. And I'm waiting for women in teen years to say Miss America when they're black to not have all the leads, to maybe have, you know, this or or braids or a curly fro. And it just be like, this is also beautiful. Absolutely. You know, like, I mean, you know all this self helpness going around everywhere? We always get told that um, you need to just be your authentic self. And now, when you tell someone to be their authentic self and they are involved in the pageant industry, yeah. it's kind of like, uh, what? So I kind of think that because she was being her truly authentic self, mm -hmm. she completely stood out from everyone else with the same, you know, cookie cutter, mm -hmm. what you would expect for a beauty pageant. And I think her being her naturally, um, coily, yes, hair, that that was boom. Yeah. Snatched her the crown. That's right, girl. Same hairdo, same hairdo. Said, ooh, ooh, oh, hey, you, you're giving us another look. Yes. To look at. Yes. And now all of a sudden, the status quo is not what everybody wants to be like. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. someone has said, this is beautiful. Absolutely. Just the way it so is. So congratulations, my queen, Congrats. my young queen. All right. Now, Sports Illustrated. Yes. Miss Alina. Halima Aiden yes. was, is, is on the cover, and she is draped, honey, in her wraps and doing her thing, her, the first one, and I'm we're mad. proud of her. I, I'm not even mad. Yes. Number I'm, one, mm -hmm. number one, that's some SPF right there. Yes. Protecting your skin from the sun. You know what? And it, it, it's true now. Like, you know, you know, people was hating at <laughs> first, especially like in France, they were like, oh, you can't wear that to the beach, da, da, da. First of all, you don't tell me what I can wear. Number right. two, I'm protecting my skin. Number three, I'm looking flawless. Yes. <laughs> she looks amazing. Kia, did you see the cover? Yeah, I saw it. I don't like it. So, it, I mean, that's what it is. I don't like what they should. Let me tell you why before everybody thinks I hate, like, it's a Muslim thing. No, it's a fact that the stuff they chose, as someone who has a lot of Muslim friends and female friends and had to go to Trinidad to a Muslim wedding recently, what they chose for her, I didn't like what they chose. I thought it made a bad impression for this to be the first time being on a Sports Illustrated cover. I feel like there were so many other things they could have done and they didn't do it. They just kind of put her in the first burkini find that was kind of creative and that was it. And I feel like if you're going to do it, do it right. Don't be lazy. That's my opinion. Okay, then. All right. I ain't mad I at it. I was just so focused on her. I couldn't get past her eyes and her face. And I was like, oh, so for me, like what she was wearing was secondary mm -hmm. because I was just kept staring. You were captivated her. by her beauty. Yes, so I could look at you first thing in the morning. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, she, oh, she looks mind. gorgeous. Go Jen, ahead, Jen. Yeah. Were you wearing one of those to the beach? You know, I probably wouldn't because I would be way too hot, but, but I think she looked beautiful. And I think that like, the issue that I have with, you know, people having a problem with it is that nobody seems to have a problem with people with these little teeny, eeny, beeny, itsy, witsy bikinis, but you have a problem with her completely covered. I thought it was beautiful. I mean, I don't know what the issue is. I mean, at the end of the day, wear whatever the heck you want to wear to the beach. Um, but I think it was a nice, again, it, it kind of follows the same theme of what we're seeing is that we're, we're starting to transition and change and allowing more things culturally and accepting people for who they are. So for that, I was fantastic. Yeah, Hashtag just write about that. that. Let's get away from the teeny tiny teeny thing because I feel like that's the fad that we've kind of gotten past. But if we're going to show the modest swimwear thing, let's do it a little bit crisper, cleaner, and better designers. True. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, some hearts got broken. It's a heartbreak hotel. Heartbreak. It's a lot of women out here 
and men. Actresses and men, honey, <laughs> that are just distraught. <laughs> because Idris Elba turned everybody else down and married Miss Sabrina, Moroccan princess. Word. They got married in a Moroccan mm. wedding and it was gorgeous. They both looked amazing. <sighs> So congratulations to the newlyweds. Yes. Ladies, it's okay. You can still admire him just from afar, okay? Yeah. Because he is a so married man invited, officially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you guys for tuning in for our hot topics, our piping hot topics. Yes. We'll be right back. Right. Welcome back, and it's time for our mocha moment. Don't forget, if you have a mocha moment to share with us, whether it's with your family, your friends, your coworkers, anything that's awesome and positive, we want to share it with everybody else. So send us an email, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Mocha Morning Show, and we'll be sure to respond. And if yeah. you're not following us already, make sure you do that yeah, as well. Yeah. Take a look this week. Our Mocha Moment features Miss Janina Simmons, who is our first African-American female soldier to graduate the U.S. Army Ranger School. So congratulations. As well, we have Miss Von Seal Dry, who's hey. right here in Florida. She turned 112 years old, and I was there to help her celebrate. That's awesome. It's so awesome. And she has her right mind. She was dancing and having That's her right. sangrias hey. at the lately. So we're so excited to uh, say happy birthday um, for your 112. She's still out of flavor. Yes, she is. Morning, yes, she is. <laughs> 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 All right, that's been our show this week. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care and have a great weekend. Adios. Ooh. Lord. I'm going to need a cookie. You're going to need a cookie. <laughs>